Today we're going to spend some time talking about the Wallingford Community Theater, who are presenting their summer play, Mary Poppins, the Broadway musical. It will be on August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th at 7.30 p.m. at Lyman Hall High School. Tickets are $15 for adults, 12 and under are ten dollars that eliminates us so and uh, <laughs> tickets are available at uh amici salon jeremiah farms gallagher travel shop connie's kitchen or online at brownpapertickets.com and we have um actually an old friend of ours uh, a friend i've known for many years uh mary ellen uh, eccles the uh director I, I think who was president when we met was it eisenhower or truman when we met <laughs> i thought it was jefferson oh jefferson <laughs> yeah, yeah it may, may have been and uh we have two of the uh actors in the play uh nicole zolad and uh, jason michael so for the next uh 25 minutes or so we're going to be talking about uh, mary poppins um first of all Welcome all. Thank you for, Thanks for having us, taking Ed. time out from what I can imagine is a busy rehearsal schedule yes, to, uh, to get ready for this. <clears throat> At the time of this taping, we're about two weeks before the actual performance. So mm -hmm. tell me uh, any pre-game pre jitters or pre-performance jitters? No, or? I think you're so busy working that you know, we're all just pretty much focused on what we need to do to get everything ready and they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. It's probably one of the most talented casts we've ever had and the biggest. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. Um, give us a little history of, of the Wallingford Community Theater. You're now in your 11th year. Our 11th year. Tell us, uh, tell us how it all started. Well, it started um, 11 years ago. Um, I, I had a meeting with the mayor and it was a dream that I had that Wall we, Wallingford had a, an art center and part of that would be the community. Uh, theater piece. So um, the mayor and the town council and everyone thought it was a great idea and we began and we started with uh, myself and a handful of interns, some of whom are now on staff. Um, and we've gone every year from there and we've grown and evolved every year. We added the children's division the second year and then the adults started, you know, we added that division the third year and it's been growing. Now we have three huge divisions, which is wonderful. And how many in the cast this year? Is, is, it, is it over 100? I don't think it's over. Well, it might be, uh, but I think it's 100 anyway. Right. We have 40 in the children's, so we have 37 little penguins. <laughs> 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 now, this year, as we mentioned, it is uh, Mary Poppins. Who decides on, on what play is to be performed for the summer, and how does that decision-making process work? Originally, because there were so few of us, it used to be I would start with looking around for ideas and then I would bounce it off a couple of interns um, uh, to see if they were seeing something that I was missing or um, good idea, bad idea. But now we have such a huge team of volunteers um, and we have a, a core group of, of leaders plus we have staff um, so that I always send it out both for repertory and for the summer musical. Um, I always send it out to everybody, you know, always send me your ideas, you know. So, but Mary Poppins was something we've wanted to do for a long, long time. Um, we were actually applying for it the same year Lyman Hall did it. And, uh, uh, yep, they. Which went, what, two years ago was it? Um, four or five. Oh, four or five years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had to wait a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have two of the uh, actors here, uh, Nicole Zolat and Jason Michaels, who are Bert and um, Mary. Um, I was going to say Dick Van Dyke and Julie Andrews. Yes, kind of a, yes. I iconic positions. Yeah. And I wanted to ask both of you, um, how did you get started in theater? And Nicole, we'll, we'll start with you. Um, I didn't get really involved in theater until high school. Um, before that, I was really focused on music. I was a pianist. I was in choirs. Um, I had a few false starts with the theater uh, in second grade. <laughs> we did we did a play. I wasn't even performing in it. I painted the cornfield set, and I was sick the week of performances. Do you remember oh. the play? No, I have no idea what it was. I just remember <laughs> painting this corn. cornfield, <laughs> <laughs> and I was crushed that I was not there the week of performances. Oh. And then a few years later, I did another show with community theater, and I was sick for the week of performances oh, no. and never got to do the show. So um, I left that for a while and just focused on music. And then in high school, uh, one of my friends had 
just come up to me one day and said, hey, we're doing Guys and Dolls. We need more people in our production. Why don't you just come to a meeting and see what you think? So I went to the meeting and I immediately quit the cheerleading squad <laughs> to be in Guys and Dolls and I never looked back. I had such a great time doing it. And I just Very kept good. doing it. Good. And Jason, I know your story of how you got started and I, I think it's a fascinating story. So, oh, it's so a great one. Sh share it with us. Well, I, I, I did a, a show in eighth grade, um, Send Me No Flowers, with uh, Joe Lyons from Dag Hammarskjöld. He was oh, wonderful. He was actually um, our, my public, I had a public speaking class, and he taught it, and he really taught it. Yeah. And everyone who came out of that class could at least be loud and be heard. And um, he was having auditions, and you, would, you could just go down and say you wanted to be a stagehand, which is what I wanted to be, and there were so many kids who went up there and you couldn't hear them and finally he was like you know his big voice he's like just go up there and, and read that and I did and I ended up with with the part in the show and it was great and that was the last part I played for 30 years or so <laughs> <laughs> and then my daughter was in a show in eighth grade and um, loved it and it, you know it came to an end towards the end of the school year and so she's moving on to high school you lose friends and, and lose touch she's very sad and I said that that summer I said why don't you you know go for walling for community theater I'm like you know go out for that and she was nervous, and I said, well, if you, if, if you go there, I'll go audition as well, assuming again I would end up <laughs> backstage helping out. <laughs> and lo and behold, um, I got a, a part in that, and it was uh, Ed Norton from The Honeymooners, and had a blast and met great people and had a, a wonderful shepherd um, who helped me through. He's got, what, 30, Dave has 30-something years in theater yeah. and just was a great coach. And, Really giving. Oh, Dave, Dave Wall. Yeah. Right, yes. Yes. right. Yes. And uh, he was Ralph of uh, mm -hmm. the Honeymooners. And um, so after that, it was off to the races, and I forgot to even ask Zelia if she wanted to be in this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Plus, right. plus you joined Repertory. Mm. Right, so yeah. the Repertory came around right after that last winter, and uh, I was um, happy to be invited for an audition there and, and uh, got to be in a great play. And it was fun. It was labor intensive and a small group of people working that hard for that long was uh, was awesome. I, I told other people that, you know, as you, you get older and I'm mid 40s now and your stable of friends naturally shrinks as people start to move out of your life and you concentrate on your family and I didn't expect to have new people, you know, that solid in my, my, yeah. my group of friends again and it's been very, very nice. But in here we are. No, is, I, think, I think I'm hooked. <laughs> good. Good. That's good. We're talking with uh, Mary Ellen Kingsland Eccles, Nicole Zolad, and Jason Michael. We're talking about Mary Poppins, the Broadway musical, appearing at Lyman Hall High School August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. That's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, curtain goes up 7.30 p.m. at Lyman Hall High School. Tickets $15 for adults, 12 and under $10. Available at Amici Salon, Jeremiah Farms, Gallagher Travel Shop, Connie's Kitchen, or online at brownpapertickets.com. You mentioned Mary Ellen a couple times. Um, repertory theater. The summer production is is the big the big production. Mm -hmm. But you also have a repertory division which did a play that Jason alluded to in March. Tell us the difference between um, a regular theater ensemble and repertory theater. Well, it's really um, it's really the member of actors and it's the commitment level of the actors. It's also, um, it's also, I would say, honestly, a skill level in the actors as well. Um, the summer, everyone is, is, is we, we love it when people have never been there before or have done it for years come. And if you want to be part of the show, you're part of the show. But in repertory, it's, it's really run um, very much like a professional theater where um, you come to audition and we cast and I have to write those awful but as kind as I can letters you know we loved your audition but we're not able to offer you a part this time but please come and and work behind the scenes with us um, we've had to turn down equity candidates because they just weren't quite right for the particular role so it's 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 the casting is is very much on the level of of um, you you're looking for an energy for a to match a particular character you're looking for. Um, not so much someone, because I'm not hooked on somebody having to look like the iconic um, character if it's a famous play, but, but I, I definitely want to see 
at least an energy level that, that's similar or that they're capable of doing that energy level, whether it's high or low. Now, repertory theater normally for your group is uh, in early spring, but I understand will that change? We're, we're moving. We're moving to the fall, yeah. Um, actually, and this is, this is kind of how, um, as I said in the beginning, a lot of the decisions are kind of left on, on one person's shoulders, but as we grow, um, repertory is very much a team um, in terms of, you know, I bring lots of questions and decisions to the, to the team, to the group. Um, I ask them, you know, look for, we like to do comedies, um, the world the way it is today and has been for a while. Um, we feel we all need to laugh and that laughter is good medicine. Um, but we, we, we look for that kind of a thing and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very much a, a team effort, the, the major decisions. And they brought to me, when we did our very first Celebrate Wallingford booth, they mentioned to me, you know, this would be a perfect time to promote repertory and sell tickets. We should do it in the fall. And, and we're always missing rehearsals and we worry about the show because when we do it in late March, early April in New England, you could get snowstorms or snow ice yeah, or something. Yeah. And um, so, so, you know, we're always open and we're learning. And so we decided this year we're moving it to the fall. It's, we've talked with the town hall. We're waiting approval. Um, they've been very kind to us last spring. We did Picasso at La Pana Gilles at, at the uh, town hall in the Robert Parisi Auditorium, the old Robert Early, where probably Joe Lyons had you perform. <laughs> <laughs> and I performed as Bert there like 100 years ago myself. But it was, um, we're waiting approval, but we're hoping to be there the um, first uh, full weekend of December, um, and we're still looking for our play at this point, but we promise it will be fun and funny. Fun for us, funny for the audience. In, in auditions, if anyone's uh, interested, would start in, would it be September? Or? Yeah, we'd probably audition and cast end of September, and then, and then rehearse until then, yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask the actors, uh, and Nicole, I'll start with you. Um, how do you memorize a script? There's heavy, heavy dialogue. Is, is, is there a secret or is there a method? And Jason, I'll come to you next, but how, uh, how do you go about memorizing a script? Um, for me, I guess I have a couple steps. I usually start by doing just flashcards or something, index cards. I'll like, quiz myself. To with like, one line at a time? With, or yeah, I'll put the prompt line or the cue line, whatever that is, on one side. The cue line is the line right before? The, 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 yes, the okay. line right before my line or whatever cues my line. It could be a song, sound, whatever. Um, so I'll test myself with that. Uh, if I have a very dialogue heavy part or a lot of monologues, I'm one of those people who will just write it down on a blank piece of paper 500 times <laughs> until I know it. And you'll see me like walking around everywhere, reciting it over and over and over. Um, but for me, it really gets kind of locked in once we actually start running it in rehearsals. Um, because before then, you think you know it then you might be running it with everyone else and you mm. learn where your weak points are. So that's what kind of locks it in. But I'm a very paper, repetition, repeating it to myself. Is your role as Mary Poppins considered a dialogue intensive in, in your eyes? I don't think it has a ton of dialogue. Um, there's, there's a good amount. I mean, it's yeah. not none, but it's not. Euripides. The, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's next year. Euripides the musical. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 mostly the the format of this is similar. It's Cameron Mackintosh, so it's got similarities to Les Mis, where there's a lot is is um, the story is told through music, through much of it, and there's connect what I call connecting dialogue in between. There are there are some. I think sometimes that's harder. Um, yeah. There's no always logical. Mm -hmm continuance, you know, Absolutely. flow of thought right. with, with it because you finished one thing and either your character, if you've got the next line, is mm -hmm. you're rarely going to continue what had happened. You're probably going to be moving it mm -hmm. on to the next next point in the story kind of thing. So sometimes it can feel... More challenging. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot more a challenging. Lot I agree. Because you, I, I, you end up with, well, I do anyway, like massive flows of adrenaline butterflies before you go on the first time. And then once you're on, that all kind of calms down. But with this 
show, it, it's almost your first time going on every 15 minutes. Yeah. Yes. So Especially, each time, yeah, yeah you, you have to yes. ramp up and be like, Definitely wait, do. is this this part or is this in full panic before it starts? And then, <laughs> you're right, and then you're back into it again. But memorization, I, I take the more cumulative approach where I just read it through and read it through and read it through till I can almost predict what's the next page, even if it's not mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I start to really focus on, because I mean, Einstein from Picasso was just shy of 200 lines, and yeah. some of them were chunky scientific, and yeah. so that was, I just read through and through yeah. and through and through, until I wore through the pages just about. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I, mm -hmm. I, but I think But you always come another. so well prepared. I try. Oh my Don't, gosh, it's even the to fear auditions. Of, it's the fear of being embarrassed <laughs> 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 that drives it. <laughs> We're talking with uh, Mary Ellen Kingsland Eccles and members of the Wallingford Community Theater. We're talking about Mary Poppins, again appearing August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th at 7.30 p.m. at Lyman Hall High School. Tickets, $15 for adults, 12 and under, $10. Will tickets be available at the door if they don't get yes. them ahead of time? Do you know yes, I would if we're not sold out, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> tickets are available at uh, Amici Salon, Jeremiah Farms, Gallagher Travel Shop, Connie's Kitchen, and online at Brown Paper Tickets. Dot com. Or through the cast. Or, th or through cast members, okay. <laughs> Whoever that may be. So. Whoever Besides that. the two we have here. <laughs> here. Um, this is Wallingford Community Theater, but it's not limited to, to right. Wallingford residents. Can right. you talk a little bit about that? Or? Sure. I mean, we, we open up, the theater community in Connecticut, um, I belong to a couple of arts councils in, in, in the state, and um, we try to foster the idea of of, um, of a synergy of helping one another out. Um, the, we're part of the Greater New Haven um, Region Arts Council, and they have a fabulous new executive director, Dan Fitzmorris, uh, who's wonderful, and he's been fostering a, a cooperative spirit among people, work together with each other, kind of thing, and that really kind of dovetails right with what we've always tried to do. Um, at uh, Wallingford Community Theater is 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 work you know play nice play play nice and work with, well with others it's kind of like the kindergarten rules you know <laughs> and uh, we've we've always tried to do that so yes we are open because Nicole you're from what I'm from Rocky Hill Rocky I'm not Hill. from Wallingford so the three of us are from Wallingford mm -hmm. but we have mm -hmm. um, our Mr. Banks is from Cromwell Glastonbury, Glastonbury? no he does where he works oh. yeah. Yeah, Dave Walton is with, from Cromwell. Cromwell, right? mm -hmm. too, yeah. So, so it's not limited. You don't have to be a long You do not have to, no. are, are most community theaters like that? or are, I are think so. To? I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good. I would say that the vast majority are from Wallingford. We probably have 10 to 12 people from out of town. But, you know, we're, we're nice neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're nice people. I, um... I told Lacey Mapes I would ask this question. Okay. She's a young actress yes. that, that I would know. And you touched uh, on this before, uh, Jason. Um, the day of a performance, because one night I was talking to Lacey and she said she was nervous. Yeah. And I said, it's good to be nervous. It is. It kind of keeps you on your game. But I'll ask the both of you. Um, well, is it good to be, you said an adrenaline flow or I, nerves? I, well, or? I found, I, I, this time around especially, the first night of rehearsal, it's like, okay, let's come on up and sing this song. And I got up there, and you're in front of about 40, 40 people in there, maybe 45. Oh. And I was looking around like, what the heck am I doing here? <laughs> I'm about to sing in front of people you know, that, you know, that are outside the bathroom, you know, when I'm taking a shower. And um, I don't think I've been that nervous since, and I don't imagine I will be again. But I think that if you get your stuff down, yeah, that's when it, when it clicks. Even with Picasso, like three weeks out, it was like, now I got it. And that was, I just wanted the show to come at that point because now you have this new toy that you want to play with. Yeah. Right. And um, that, I think, it lessens for me. As the more prepared I get, the, the more you know, the calm I am. I think that's one of the things, one of the more important parts of my job. Um, when I cast, um, I, really, I really believe in that person, who they are as a person and their abilities and what they're going to bring into that character or that role. So. I see it as part of my job um, as, as the director to be like their coach as well and, and remind them that I know they can do it and I believe in them. So that sometimes just hearing that somebody else 
really honestly believes you're capable of doing this and everything's going to be okay is enough to calm you down enough to take that step out on the stage. As a director, will you be nervous opening night or do you normally? Um, no, I'm not. I don't, I don't think nervous is the right word. I'm excited. Adrenaline? Really excited. Probably adrenaline. But, you know, we're rushing around. And, I mean, I've been on the stage since I was three. And so I've seen both sides of it. I think I was far more nervous as an actor. I remember having the lead at the musical um, at Southern, and it was pretty much a one-woman show kind of. It was Apple Tree. And I was on stage all the time. And I remember <laughs> the overture and standing in the dark in my costume and, and suddenly not feeling my arms. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The curtain's going to open. I'm going to be on the floor. <laughs> and it was fine. You take a deep breath and you go and, and then you're fine. So, but more, the more you do it, the more you accept that and you say, it's just part of the process. It's when you get in your head about it that you can really start messing yourself up. But Nicole, any, any thoughts? Is it I good to be nervous? I get very nervous. I'm not like Jason. I do not get less nervous <laughs> as we go towards the show. No, I'm usually really, really nervous. But once, I mean, once the show gets going and you settle in on stage and you remember that your whole cast is there around you, then yeah. I calm down. It's just at the beginning. I, uh, I just have a, I have a nervous disposition, I guess. I just, I just am nervous. But <laughs> it's important to be nervous for me. I think if you get too relaxed then maybe not as engaged mentally. Yeah. I have no doubts in her. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, I, told, I, I was telling my wife the first night when we get there, and I'm flipping through this libretto that I didn't know it was, <laughs> and it's like set up with the music in the back and the words in the front, but some of the lyrics are in the front and some of the dialogues in the music, and I'm trying to find out where everybody is. And she starts her first song, and my head's down, and I'm like this, and, and I hear the music start, and then I hear the lyrics start, and I'm like, oh, she missed, she missed her cue. And I looked up, and she's singing. I mean perfectly in sync and pitch with the mm. professional track you have. And I'm like, oh, we're going to be OK. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to ask one of my go-to questions that I do every time we do, do one of these. And I'll start with you, Mary Ellen. Um, what's tougher to do, a drama or a comedy, and why? I think comedy. Um, I've done both. And when I was studying in, in college, we were taught comedy. Um, comedy is all about timing. And um, it's easier. I mean, there's timing in all acting. But comedy, in drama, you might change the interpretation a little bit about how a line, if, if your timing has changed. But in comedy, if you miss your timing, if you wait too long before you say the next line that's kind of the punchline, or you say it too soon, it's not funny anymore. And that's devastating in a comedy. Whereas in drama, you hope they don't laugh. <laughs> <So it's laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Nicole, your thoughts? Uh... I totally agree. I also think when you're doing a comedy, um, you're more tuned into the audience's energy level too. So yes. if you have um, maybe a bit of a duller audience one night, that can throw you off more than yeah. if you had that in a drama where you're in a very intense kind of emotional frame of mind. Um, so yeah, I definitely agree that comedy is a bit more challenging in some ways than a drama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And Jay? Um, yet to do a drama, so I couldn't really say. <laughs> but I do understand where, with the difference in crowds. Even in last rep with Picasso, we had three nights, and they were all different. Mm. But one of them was on fire for some oh, reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, I mean, we, we had the same shows. We all nailed it each night. Mm -hmm. But that one night, the crowd was, it just was infectious. And it spurs us on. And like I said, I, I think in a drama, and it'll always be that way. Yeah, in a drama, if, and they're somber, they're somber all three nights because it's dramatic. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So your roles in, in, in Mary Poppins, you, you do a lot of singing as much as a dialogue. Do you have to pace yourself to make sure that the voices you, you don't strain or anything like that? Is there any secret? Oh, I, I kind of <laughs> look at my voice as a Dodge Dart, where I imagine she's probably a Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, we just put the pedal down and go. <laughs> He's got an awesome voice. That's one yeah, of the fun things great. about Jason is he had no idea with mm -hmm. Norton. He nailed Ed Norton last summer. His Einstein was, was one of the best I've ever seen. Thank you. Short of Einstein himself. <laughs> this is hack. Somewhere Albert is smiling. <laughs> <laughs> 
Again, we're talking with uh, Mary Ellen Tingland Eccles and uh, actors from the Wallingford Community Theater presenting uh, Mary Poppins. You can see it on your screen now, August 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, 7.30 p.m. at Lyman Hall High School here in Wallingford. Tickets are $15 for adults, 12 and under $10. Available at Amici Salon, Jeremiah Farms, Gallagher Travel Shop, Connie's Kitchen, or online at brownpapertickets.com. Uh, very quickly for you, we have under uh, just under four minutes. God, four minutes left. This is, wow. this is quick. It's always fun. Mm -hmm. Someone sees this show, sees a play, wants to get involved next season. Right. Or repertory. What are the, what we have we have a Facebook page. That's probably the fastest and easiest way. Um, and uh, it's just Wallingford Community Theater at Facebook. And it's it's R E, not E R. And um, that's probably the fastest. I'm really good about responding. In fact, uh, Facebook has rated me very highly in my response. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they did that. Oh. But, phew. <laughs> and, uh, and, and for the actors, is, is there a role you would like to play? Is there a character that, that you would like to play? And uh, we have three minutes, so you can, okay. you can embellish a little um, bit on it if you would. Off the top of my head, uh, I would love to play Phoebe Dicecliff in The Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder one day. Um, they just released the rights, I think, the amateur rights for that piece. So maybe one day it will happen. Um, I also would love to do a Shakespeare one day. I've never done any Shakespeare. I love As You Like It in particular, but I don't have a particular. Is yeah. Shakespeare still popular? Are they still doing a lot of... Shakespeare will always be popular. Yeah. <laughs> That's William Shakespeare. Right? Yeah. yeah. All right, okay. Mrs. Shakespeare, little boy. Little boy Bill, yeah. yeah. And Jason, is there, a, is there a role? Well, I think more of a type. Uh, having done mm -hmm. comedies, you know, with Wallingford uh, mostly, or lighthearted, I really have an itch to play somebody sinister and mm -hmm. just just Eric? cold and, yeah, and <laughs> scary. Like, just, I, it would be... Interesting to gear up to be mean instead of goofy. <laughs> <laughs> Is it just just for the challenge of it? Yeah, or, yeah, just uh, to see the other side, you know. Because I mean, you, no matter what mood you're in, you have to be. You have to be up there. And funny and 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 the other one seems so much after you know a long day's work and you're going to practice. It seems like I could be mean in an instant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, does does practice or rehearsal does? after X amount of weeks of, of training for it, of rehearsing for it. Does it get to be a grind near the end, or does the adrenaline get you to the finish line? Mm -hmm. I think that's part of the job. I, I think the, the director and, and, and the team of us who work together, I think that's our job to pace. Um, but I think in this particular year, it's such a huge show. Mm -hmm. I mean, just when they think they know all the music, now we're throwing in blocking and working the lines, and then Along comes the wonderful Megan Shortell Friend Antonio, and she's ready. Okay, let's start dancing. Here's the choreography, and they're all going. We can't do that, but they are. You know, it's wonderful. Well, we have uh, just about gotten to the end of our half hour. Again, uh, one more plug: Mary Poppins, August second, third, and fourth, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Curtain time, seven thirty p.m. at Lyman Hall High School. Tickets are fifteen dollars for adults. Uh, 12 and under $10. Once again, at Amici Salon, Jeremiah Farms, Gallagher Travel Shop, Connie's Kitchen, cast members, or online at brownpapertickets.com. Uh, with 45 seconds left, it gives me time enough to say thank you very much for joining us. Um, break a leg, is that what they thank say you, yes. in the theater? Yes. So, and, and you didn't yeah. mention that you're in the play as well. Well, <laughs> you know how shy I am. Yes. And, uh, yes. Please come see the play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks you know, for having Maureen us. will be there. Uh, yeah, good. Probably till I come on. But, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, we want to thank you. Good luck, and uh, we'll, we'll see you at the theater. Right. Thank you. Thank All you. right. That's it from us here. Have a good night. <laughs>